What is going on, Movie Meals? Movie Hey, we never left. Never. Are you kidding me? Not really. Uh, last podcast, legit episode. <laughs> it was a little over a month ago, month and a half ago. I have posted a couple shorts, though, uh, mm. in the last few weeks, but we've been mm. busy. Hey, if you're new to the channel, we ain't out here trying to do nothing but be ourselves, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, some days we're busy. I've been all over the country, couldn't be filming on weekends and stuff. Kyle was busy. He was on a lake. He was enjoying his life in a mm. world that stinks. So let's just, mm-hmm. we just, we just film when we want to film, baby. We ain't stopping. Heck yeah. No. Nah. No. We'll, we'll uh, always be back somehow. <laughs> we always come back. <laughs> Whether you want it or not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're here. Uh, thank you, Moomio Moom, Patriots. Kimberly Karen, go get some merch. We're going to give a hoodie away when we still get to that 2000 because, hey, we always come back, baby. We always We're, come back. We always come back. Leave a like, a comment, share, all that stuff. We'll pick somebody who's been commenting on videos. Uh, yeah, and then uh, thank you, Moomio Moom, Patriots. Kimberly Karen, let's get into it here. Today, we're just kind of willy-nilly. It could be an hour full up. Could be short. We're just gonna talk. We're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk real briefly about the acolyte. Okay, I've been watching Star Wars. Ain't going nowhere for me. If you've been here a long time, you know, die hard over here. Uh, but I want to briefly talk about it. Both Kyle and I. I believe Kyle, you caught up, correct? Yes, I did. All right. Yeah. So we we're both caught up. I don't even know if we'll talk about spoilers. I kind of just want to rant about the way the show's being perceived. And then we're just going to talk about things we've been watching of late. We'll uh, probably pop our letter boxes open, double check TV, movies, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. We'll just talk about what we've been watching, catch up. We've seen a bunch of movies, give uh, two cents on a handful of them. But uh, I just want to talk on The Acolyte. And I very quickly, I, I made a, a short on the channel um, about The Acolyte a couple weeks ago. Let me see, when did I post it? I got it up here right in front of me here. Let's take a peek. Uh... I posted it a couple, couple, couple weeks, like a week or two ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, it was a little longer than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, about two, two and a half, three weeks, just oh, on, so on the four, acolyte. So a couple episodes in, four or five, maybe at that point. Yeah. Uh, and we had one comment because I briefly talked about how anyone can tap into the force, anyone that that's mm-hmm. been established. And mm-hmm. we got a comment, and this is a. Hey, uh, Addict Strife 1997. This is no necessarily shade. I'm just here to educate you, okay? You can do a quick Google search and just type in, can anyone use the force? And you will be linked to a dozen articles. First one I found was from Screen Rant, which all comes from an interview with George Lucas where he compares the force to yoga. That mm-hmm. everybody can do yoga. I can go do yoga. I'm not flexible. But some people are going to be naturally better at it. You know, I can go do yoga for two years and I will never, I can go every day for two years and I'll never be as good as Simone Biles and her ability to stretch. You know what I mean? Like, and to be able to do those things. Yeah. Like she's just, she's, she's Yoda in, in this analogy here. Okay. Anyone, George Lucas established it. The, he said in the comment, bro, no, this is super cop. The first six movies firmly established that literally, and in all caps, not anyone can tap into the force. That is not true. Anyone can tap into the force, okay? The, there have been a lot of complaints about this show. I know big Star Wars content creators have been bashing it. I know some have been defending it. Uh, it it's been divisive. Haven't seen it this divisive since... Uh, the last since, show. uh, since, well, honestly, no, I don't think it's been this toxic, this toxic since the last Jedi. Really? Um, hmm. but I've seen people say the acolyte is like far and beyond the worst show. And I, I hate to break it to you. Boba Fett's the worst show pals. <laughs> and yeah. it's not even close. It's yeah. not even close. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, does the acolyte break canon at this moment? No, it doesn't. Uh, and hey, if you're a huge Star Wars nerd, I want you to direct me to the canon lore at this moment that I have maybe not read or seen that you are referring to. Because from everything, and I've read a handful, haven't read everything, of the new canons. If it's Legends, it's not canon. Okay? You've got to move on. All you old people, you got to move on. I don't love everything Disney's been doing. 
There are things about some shows I love. There are parts of Obi-Wan Kenobi I can't stand. There are parts that I love to death that I think are some of the best Star Wars has done in a while. I've been critical of Disney. I've also supported Disney. It's hard to jump into this world, okay? I'm optimistic. To me, Star Wars has always been a restaurant, okay? They're going to keep adding things to the menu. Order what you love. Try something new. If you don't like it, don't order it again, okay? It's, it's ascended beyond normal filmmaking, okay, at this point. But The Acolyte, to me, I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed quite a bit. I do not think it is broken canon, okay? We'll dip into a little bit of spoilers here. The biggest complaints... Anakin is no longer special. Blah, 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 blah. Anakin's no longer special. These witches manipulated the force to create life. Blah, 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 blah. We have zero. I'm caught up as far as everyone else is caught up. There is no explanation. They're witches. They're compared to the witches that we all love in the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. Okay? Of Dathomir. Mm -hmm. They're all connected Similar, I mean, they're similar witches that we have seen Bendu. We have seen multiple other entities in the universe talk about the Force in different ways. That makes sense in a story. It does not make sense for 15 planets to be the only ones who have the Force. It makes sense in a galaxy full of thousands and billions, I mean, billions of planets. To have different versions of the Force, they compare it to a thread. They talk about the Force and how and and they don't say the Force in the show it, like that. When the witches are talking in that what second episode, Alexa, cancel that third, timer. Forgot it had a timer episode. on. Uh, timer thank you. Um, yeah, the third episode. Okay, of of them talking about this thread. They don't call it. They I think they might refer to the Jedi saying that they call it a Force. But it's just another name. George came up with the name second. He, it was just all the wills. And I know this because I've read George Lucas's biography. Okay? Mm -hmm. He came up with the idea of the wills. Then it evolved into the slow, uh, or slowly over into a force. And he still weaved the 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 wills in. There's a whole episode in the Clone Wars where but Anakin now. becomes Vader. Because of these ancient people who are from the wills. No complaints about that because the episodes are great. Anyway, what? What's your, give me your comment. Give me your snark. Give me your sarcasm. Yeah, I, I know it's coming. A, a, I was making a snarky joke that um, is his biography like Legends or is it fully canon? It is Legends, actually. It never happened. George did not get in a car accident that changed the course of his life because he almost died. Now that just proves there everything. There we go. Just... <laughs> um... Uh, it's actually considered so, canon, though, or not canon. His his biography is just it's biography. It's not considered anything. It's not okay. Just making sure. I was but like, they but wait. talk about him creating Star Wars. That's that's mm -hmm. what matters. Okay. Right. Look, I get that people don't like it. Lesbian witches have come about, and they've, they scare people. They have they have spoken to where an audience member can go. Oh, so they basically created life. They created life. Look, if I'm a space witch who's a lesbian, I probably would do that too. Sounds like a quick and easy, cheap way to, to have a baby. Like, good for them. Are you kidding me? Like, what, what are we Stands talking about here? It doesn't take away anything from Anakin. It doesn't. It, it doesn't to me. Anakin, and look, there are big, big creators that I've watched a long time. And to be honest, I don't really watch a lot of Star Wars content anymore because it, it's become very divisive. But uh, I just read and watch what gross. I want to watch. Huh? It's become gross. It's true. Like, it's disgusting. I don't know. It, it, not gross in, like, I don't know, any graphics sort of way, but just gross in how people treat, uh, I don't know, just treat entertainment made for children. You know? Like, it's just mm -hmm. so... And I'm not trying to be rude here, but, like, despite us adults talking about this and watching this at the end of the day it is for children i mean i'm watching my adventures Absolutely. with superman right now and yes i am enjoying that show but i also know it's not necessarily for me like it is meant for children first and then or it might still be on adult swim anyway but 
And you're you're a big fan of of a lot of the DC animated stuff, and they've made oh, sure. some stinkers yeah. of animated shows. I'm sure. A lot like, of their movies are bad now. Yeah. And does Kyle post anything online talking about how it's all woke and hor? No, stop. And the fact that like um, Amanda Stanberg, who plays May and Osha, is getting death mm. threats. You don't belong in the Star Wars. You're not even a fan. You're a loser. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That... Stop that nonsense. What are we doing again? We've bullied everybody. Daisy Ridley got bullied. I mean, everybody. John Boyega has been bullied, and he's also championed by fans. You talk about what happened. Uh, uh, what's the actress's name who played uh, Rose? Um, Kelly. Uh, Kelly Marie right? Tran. Thank yeah. you. Yes, Kelly Marie Tran. Um, she was bullied incredibly bad. Oh yeah. And I, I, I am a Last Jedi defender. I think the Last Jedi is great storytelling. I think that is the weakest part of the movie is the love story and everything in a lot around her character. I also think she did a great job doing what the director wanted her to do. And it's so bully him. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ryan Johnson, you sit down for two seconds and actually watch Ryan Johnson talk about the, the star Wars and how he's a fan. And I don't know how you sit there and yell at him anymore. Mm -hmm. Like if you sit down and you're like, if you spoke to him, you'd probably learn that he's just as big of a fan as you look. Mm -hmm. I've been sure. critical. I think the show's done a great job. I think they've introduced a great villain. All he says, again, spoilers, I guess. All he Go says Manny. is, I know, he was excellent. I want to see more of him. He's a great Sith, whatever he is. But he just says, you guys would probably call me a Sith, but I'm just no one or something like that. You know, he mm -hmm. says he's nobody, but he's been referred to as a Sith so far. Not a single, hey, look, we have one episode left in this season. And another big complaint, Coyote Mundy was there. Coyote Mundy is the one who says no Sith. All Coyote Mundy did was talk about some stuff going on and that they think there might be somebody training Jedi. Could it be a fallen Jedi? Sure, maybe. And he's like, all right, yeah, great. Thanks for the briefing. And he moves on. That's mm -hmm. it. There has been no communication. There's been no nothing. Everybody complained and complained and complained. And then all of a sudden there was an, an incredible fighting sequence, an amazing battle in this show. It might be one of the best battles Star Wars has ever had. It's so freaking good. They kill characters. Thank you. That's all I've heard complaints of for years is that the stabs mean nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Even though, you know, half of them are getting stabbed in the side where, like, then you have doctors coming on explaining, oh, I think you could survive that. Darth Maul got cut in half, fell down a, a chute that went mm -hmm. however many miles and survived but we love that no that's okay because we loved it it's all we only pick and choose what we hate and we love we don't give any actual continuity people complained in episode one you can't have fires in space you can't drop bombs in space like the last jedi did I, hmm. again pals about that one. we're not watching gravity here it's not we're in a galaxy far a long time ago this is a long time ago in a galaxy far far away look be critical of the show. That's fine. Give me legitimate complaints. If it breaks canon, show me. Don't comment saying, dude, you're an idiot. Show me. Put it in the comment. Where is it breaking canon? Where? Anakin was created because Palpatine and Plagueis were messing around with midichlorians or trying to create life, messing around with life, and the Force birthed Anakin Shmi says there was no father. That's it. I mean, that's really all we know. There's a comic where Anakin kind of sees versions of his own life as Vader becoming this, and he is seeing versions of, of his history that change, and there's a version of that where Palpatine manipulates the midichlorians in Shmi, but that is not canon. That is just... Uh, that's just something he is visioning as like, oh, that, that puts fear into me, like it's made up. But I, I, I don't understand where we're breaking canon. I don't understand where it's coming from, and I'd love clips. I'd love, I'd love mm. someone to show me where it's breaking. Don't, don't say, well, this is what happened. Show me. Say it's this book on this page. It's this episode. It's this movie on the, in this scene that I think it breaks canon. That's what I want. Alex, Give me the receipts. Grifty. Grifting 101 isn't about showing. It's about just saying something and have people buy into it. If exactly. you just say it enough times, people will buy into it. If you Google right now before everybody yells at me, if you Google 
Star Wars, The Forces, Yoga, you're going to find a bunch of articles where George Lucas is talking about how he compares it to yoga and that anybody can tap into the force. George Lucas also in an interview way back in the day was talked about how the Millennium Falcon flies through space. And he talks about in this interview that he, because he's a, he was a big fan of cars. I mean, obviously made American graffiti. He was into car racing, uh, all these things. Um, and he said he wanted the Millennium Falcon to look like it could drift like a car would. And somebody mm. challenges him in the interview and goes, that's not possible in space without air. And his response was, there's air in Star Wars when I want there to be air in Star Wars. We're just doing what the goat did, baby. That's it. That's it. It, it reminds me <laughs> of that... Um... We quote uh, behind the scenes in Lord of the Rings. I forget which one it was, but one of the actors who played the Hobbit was asking, like, one of the lighters uh, who was like getting the light for the one of these shots was was asking, like, how does that work if like the time frame of this day is happening like this, and then the light is going to be coming from that direction, something along those lines. And the dude with like the light bulb was like, "Man, I'm just setting up the shot here to make it look great. Like, it, we're not <laughs> thinking about like the little details like that, like." Yes, it's. I get that people get obsessive when it comes to like Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, but at the end of the day, we Marvel, also have to DC. like. Yeah, yeah, it's o it's okay to be critical of like how a story is being told, but it's another thing when you get it too critical into like the nitty gritty of something that doesn't need to be um, broken down that way. You know, I, I mean, yeah, unless you're doing it for humor's sake, sure. But otherwise, I just don't understand why it's like, well, they obviously wouldn't breathe because of space. It's like, who, like, okay, it, it's, it's sci-fi, fantasy. like, it's sci why, yeah, exactly. Why, it's science why don't fiction. you want to have fun? Why don't you want to <laughs> think they would breathe in space? Like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, people yeah. just get way too serious about they something that choose. again is supposed to be imaginative for children. They, like they that's pick and choose. Freddie Prince Jr.'s got his epic quote on on either. I, I don't remember if it was on his podcast or if it was uh, a guest on a podcast where he talks about mm -hmm. like he goes on a huge rant where he's like, "Star Wars just isn't for you anymore, dog. You're just not. You're just upset that it's being made for kids." Guess what, Freddie? I agree with you. And some of the things annoy yeah. me that I wish they could have made better, but it, it's not for us. I've seen kids. I teach children. I teach younger kids. Like I've seen them yeah. love this new version of Star Wars and I hate it. I hate some of it. I love some of it. I mean, some yeah, of it's I mean, awesome. I'm going to talk about my adventures with Superman again. Like that show is kind of like an American anime. Like it's inspired from anime and that's not Heck necessarily yeah. like what I like per se, but I am growing to like it because the show's that good. But I understand why they went that route because anime is super popular for kids right now. So of course, when you make a new show, why not give them a little bit of anime give them anime splash which is working very well by the way i do love it but i'm just saying when i first heard about the show i'm like anime style for superman that doesn't seem like it would match but hey it's what kids like and it's working really well so what's it look complain about if your argument is okay fine it's for kids i want i want something though that's a good product you know make me a good pixar movie like an inside out 2 or mm -hmm. or avatar the last airbender is for kids but very very smart in what it does and tells a great unique story that's really just timeless i can understand that argument that's not the argument i hear like i'm hearing right. i'm just yeah. hearing screams because you didn't get what you wanted or it's doing this and doing this and then they keep watching it stop watching the show if you don't that's how like characters it, just make money. I know. It's just all. It's hate, all about speech, uh, stupid monetization, stuff. man. I know. I know. It, anyway, I I don't get it. I'm having a lot of fun with the show. I hope it gets a season two. I like Leslie. I think she's done a great job. Um, there are some things in the show I actually don't love, but mm -hmm. overall, I'm having a good time. It's one of the better shows so far. It's still no Andor. Andor's far and above by oh God, far yeah. the best. It's not even yeah. close. Uh, how good Andor is, but. Anyway, yeah, let's move on. Kyle, what have you been up to these days? What you've been watching? What are some? Uh, what, what have you watched? We well, got Superman. Okay, what, what else have you been watching these days? Well, I've been watching The Acolyte. Want me to talk about that? <laughs> yes, sir, I do. Yes, sir, uh, I do. That fight is pretty great, though. All that big battle. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty I do think that fight was good. very good, and it, it was. A reveal that wasn't necessarily surprising for me, but I could see how that reveal was surprising for, again, 
kids. That's Funny another that complaint works. I've I've heard though. The reveal's so easy. Yeah, I hope it is. Okay, it's a show but... coming out monthly. It wouldn't you wouldn't have thought of it if you had clicked next episode and it came out all at once. You wouldn't have been thinking about it, but you had a week to sit and think and go, okay, I could think of this scenario, this scenario, this scenario, this scenario. Yeah. When you think of all hundred scenarios, you're mm-hmm. bound to be right. <laughs> like, yeah. what are we talking about here? <laughs> There's absolutely nothing but garbage. Look, uh, I, I wasn't really excited for the Acolyte show to begin with just because, like, I've just been getting so tired about being disappointed by Star Wars shows myself. Um, I'm, but I am glad that I'm taking a chance on this one because I do think this is one of the more stronger shows. I do think it's stronger I think it than sure is. Obi-Wan and, like, uh, Ahsoka, for example. Boba Fett, obviously. Um, it... At first, I was a little nervous about the show because, like, what, three episodes in maybe? I was enjoying it fine, but I wasn't really feeling myself wanting to stay put with the show. But I will say it is doing the thing that most TV shows are supposed to do. It's supposed to have, like, kind of the stumbles along the way, but it grows into something to where you see, like, good outcomes coming out of it. And from episode And from the second half of this show... I've been enjoying it more than I felt like I did with the first half of the show. So I do think it's having like a good gradual build in like what it's trying to do. Um, and I I think that it's strong for that reason. Like it feels like it's actually a very great build towards something. Now that being said, we still have one more episode left and I don't really like that it is eight episodes. I wish it was a bit more of like, I don't know, I 10 too, at least. But... Um, that's but I hope I this think. show oh, at least gets a season two because I could see it to where this becomes like an ongoing series and not just like a mini series. I think this show actually would warrant like, like I don't know, one more season or two more seasons. I, I really do think like the show could grow and like this new villain character and these other characters could actually grow to become more beloved as compared to what was being tried for by like new characters from many of the other star wars shows so yeah um yeah it has something going for it it's not one that i'm loving like as much as i did for andor but i do see like the promise in it and um yeah i don't know there's some good stuff here that i've been enjoying more um let's stick to tv what other stuff have you been watching these days before we switch over to the film uh let's see for tv i have been watching attack on titan for (laughs) let's go well not technically because we got you to watch about what Full first season or so uh, back in college. The first season. Half and then, of the first season, probably. Yeah. Got busy. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Where? Got busy. No, I just stopped watching. Spoilers <laughs> for Attack on Titan, even though it's ended. Where uh, were you at? This is really uh, just for me. Attack ooh. on Titan slaps. If you don't like the ending, you're a wacko. Everybody hated I it in the have... books. Changed their mind in the show. Let's see. I have gone to the part where it's the two episode arc of uh, um, the father who discovers that where everything takes place on currently in the show is the is an island compared to so you're in the basement everywhere else yes you've made it to the basement yes the base yes the basement how, I should have said that but yeah how great is retaken wall maria how great is yeah. that arc yeah are you kidding me reading it the shot again mm. all spoilers for attack on titan yeah, the shot me. of Levi in the book where he's on the wall and Levi mm-hmm. or uh, uh, Zeke, the Beast Titan, is like, man, this guy's like a devil or something. And he's just covered in blood with the steam coming off. And then he drops yeah. down. Oh, that <laughs> whole thing is so good. Ervin, I'd follow Ervin into the depths of anywhere. Name it. Name whatever whatever place you want me to go. I would follow Ervin Smith. He's like, we're all going to die, but I don't care. Get on your horse. We're going to distract them. They're firing flares. Oh, uh, I wouldn't agree with that. So I would, even I would be like, I have some questions. I don't know. That speech, though. <laughs> that speech, though. One well, oh. of the better speeches of the show. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's so so good i'd follow ervin oh i'd follow him anywhere and then all oh, the battle with levi and the beast titan is so good too when he's when he's oh, like dude that all of a sudden cool. his hand gets ripped and he goes into his inner monologue and he's just like wait is this is this levi and he flashes back and it's like he's like scoffing he's like one soldier one mm-hmm. guy can pose a threat to and me these guys are I'm pathetic like- I'm like, you didn't hear that Levi's the best character of the show, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> what was that? 
Oh, oh, it's it's so good. And then when uh, when he when he gets the blade through his cheek and he's like, "Hey, I asked you a question," and then he pops it in. Mm-hmm. He can't even mm-hmm. speak. Oh my goodness. Oh, Kyle's wife telling me about his attack on Titan. They just he's they just got to the basement. So we're talking about how great retaking <laughs> Walmart is. Oh, it's so good. Kyle, we waited years to see that animated. Years we had to oh, wait. Oh yeah, I I've been told by your buddy who's having me watch it about like how long these waits have been and meanwhile I'm like, Well, we're obviously gonna go to the next episode and they're and he's just like, Yeah. <laughs> when <laughs> you will never when, know uh, what it's like. <laughs> when we we're going on an anime rant, when we uh when the when the first season was the only thing out and the the book hadn't been too far out i mean it was mm-hmm. much farther but not not nearly as far we used to sit in in who Kyle's watching it with's basement and we would d- like theorize where are they i remember us talking like what if they're on an island like what if they're not alone and they're oh. not the only people like we used to theorize that stuff and okay. and like like all those just oh well my just, theory i'm trying to remember what i was thinking my theory was my theory no was that like headed. Um, I think my theory was that, like, everything, like, society was progressing up to a point, but then, like, I don't know, something, like, chemical-wise, like, reverted everyone down to where it's, like, not not medieval times necessarily, but just, like, in that time period, like, somehow society, like, took progression back. Like, I wasn't thinking, like, there was a lone island and, you know, everything else was progressing i thought so everywhere you, else was like that you watched the first episode of his dad growing up and what the story of his father in the book yes oh, okay you're you're gonna get a lot of your questions on your theory and answers to that theory right in that next episode you got great uh, stuff coming no i've seen i've seen that up uh, well wait have you finished where... the basement yeah yeah oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I did. just gonna let you. All right. All right. I'll let you just yeah. keep on by. But that was my, my theory up until nutty. I saw in the book that like the drawing of the island, and then yeah. Arrow okay. Oh, through. I got you. Okay, I'm caught yeah, up. Yeah, I yeah. thought you were speaking something different. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. no, no this no. show's really just about racism. It's really what it's about. It's about oh, well, how yeah. people were treated of you know different different nobilities and races and classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are Absolutely. in for season four. B- buckle up pal that's th- that's when the time skip happens right well, i've heard first... rumblings of a time skip oh yeah. did he man you just made an attack on titan pun there that was incredible oh <laughs> oh rum- rumblings oh, yeah okay. you hang on to that word rumble See, I... and it'll be back it'll be back baby it'll be back and you're gonna cry <laughs> you're gonna be so sad oh terrific i already was nearly devastated by um Armin's almost death. That's for sure. Oh, like, you were Team Armin, huh? Yeah, yeah. I think okay. I. Would. I think I was. Although it was, it was tough because on the one hand, I was like, you know me when it comes to this stuff. Like, if something like that big like that is going to happen, I kind of want them to stick with it. So on the one hand, I was conflicted. I was like, I love him so much. We obviously need him more than that awful general. But on the other hand, I was like. The uh, awful general. I don't think he was that good. Ervin I don't think he was that Smi- good. Oh my. I don't think he was that good. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Why do you think I didn't think the speech was good? I am roasting you in movie club later. I Everybody we know has has caught up to it. I got eight friends in there who are ready to just obliterate you. That Kyle doesn't like Ervin Smith. Stop. When he loses his arm... And he yells, oh, I said advance! And they're, and everyone's like, no, oh, our commander's... What? He's still... And then he... Oh, my... You're I still awful. would not like it. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Do you're it. the worst. You're the worst. Oh. <laughs> um. But Arvin, man, that he's the best. He's, that's he's insane. the best of all of us. Because most people don't, be like can't stand Armin. Most people can't stand Armin through almost the entirety of the show. I like Armin. I've always have liked Armin, but... That's a lot of crazy. people just hear him going, Aaron! And just screaming Aaron's he's name. He's gotten better. For the first. He does get a lot better. He's a great he character. Got... No, I think he's a great character. But what a... From where you're at, what a heck of a... You don't have a of lot a left. You don't have a lot left. It feels like a lot still. And also, yeah. we're watching on Crunchyroll. So, like, the way they list yeah, out like, oh yeah, the episode dumb. numbering and crunchy roll is not good by the way like that is not a good service i know we've used it a thousand times and no. like they need to have like a better 
everything. No, no, Interface. Yeah, they're uh, bad. Uh, they're bad. Use, yeah, it's just bad. <laughs> yeah, Funimation I thought was slightly better overall, but they, it was also pretty bad. And then they merged. Sure. But, um, well, speaking of anime, I'm I got I've been rewatching Naruto for the past nine months, <laughs> taking it nice and oh. slow, a couple episodes every day. Try to hit one or two. We're almost done. Love mm. Naruto. Got the tattoo of Naruto. Got the whole yeah, manga volumes there. Uh, sexy. We got about 60 eps left. We're skipping filler because skipping filler is smart, especially in Naruto when it's 50%, like 52% <laughs> filler. Stop with your... The, people go, the filler's good. There are some filler episodes that are fun. They're not good. They're fun. And sure. there's some filler they do add in a canon episode where it's a mixed episode that I think does add some elements to the story overall that does a good job. But overall, most filler's stupid. The Kakashi episode where they're trying to see under his mask phenomenal mm. um mm -hmm. been watching that caught up on demon slayer Woo! i've been on a demon slayer hype train haven't read it don't want to read it i'm just enjoying the pure gold that is the animation in that show sure. and yeah. boy i loved this new arc not people didn't a little slow burn trained but boy am i hyped they're splitting the last three or the last season into three movies and they're essentially going to be from what i've heard Jeez. like two like, I think the first two movies are going to be two massive battles. And then the last movie is going to be like the whole end of the show, the big battle. It's insane. The vibe mm. is awesome. Uh, nice. Been watching that. All right. What else you got? What else you've been watching on TV, television? On TV? Well, like I mentioned, my adventures with Superman. Uh, that's been like a show that I make sure to catch up immediately okay. every week. Uh, it's make me excited about Superman again. Like, I think. Unfortunately, in the tens, we kind of went into this rabbit hole of trying to make Superman uh, like a very serious, dark character, um, like from what we have seen of like Man of Steel and BBS and like the Injustice games and all that. And I just feel like it, the character itself kind of lost its way in terms of media outside of comics. So it's nice to have a show feeling like it's going back to the roots of what makes Superman Superman, like just this wholesome uh character that's trying to do the right thing even if it's not always like the biggest threat to do the right thing sometimes just the little things mm. of just being a good person that matters um and i've also really liked the uh anime approach to it i'm very surprised by that because i just again it just didn't seem like a puzzle piece that would fit together but surprisingly it does do a lot for making the uh superpowers of superman exciting um and, and, and it is feeling like very different. Like I was expecting more so a show of like Superman's rogues gallery when instead we're having like a slow burn of like Lex Luthor's reveal or like one of the main antagonists is like, uh, uh, not Deadpool, Deathstroke, uh, who's yep. like, you know, working under uh, Amanda Waller, who's again, not necessarily like a Superman villain, but like she is like a villain in terms of like bigger DC stuff, I suppose. So uh, just some of the approaches they're taking in terms of like how he discovers his powers, how he's discovering his Krypton background is like a lot more of like a slow burn reveal type style, even though the show itself feels like it's very fast paced, almost like how uh, X-Men 97 was. But somehow it's just working for me because I think at the end of the day, it just has its um, good nature wholesomeness to like the vibes of the show in general and to like the characters of the show that you want to root for. Um Nice. So, yeah, and also Jack Quaid is awesome, and he's doing a good job voicing Superman, so... Oh, I didn't know it. Jack. I've been watching The Boys with him. Yeah. How's The Boys yeah. been? I like it. I haven't watched season four yet. I like it. I get the, uh, the... I mean, we've had friends. Kyle and I have been talking about this. We have friends who are like, it fell off, and they told us after the first three episodes came out, and it's like, mm -hmm. we've got... We've got a lot more episodes to go. Let's judge the whole thing. I've liked it. I do think they are getting to the point where it's like, all right... You've got to amp me up a little bit past the intense shock, like sexual shock value or the violent yeah. shock value. You can have those in there, but it's getting to the point where at least in this season, I'm starting to get the feel like, it okay, on it. like, like it's fine. And sometimes they make me laugh or, you know, I'm like, oh, or, you know, I'll, I'll react the way I want to react. And I don't necessarily hate that it's in the show, but it's, there's not as much movement uh, with the overall plot. I feel at this moment. Okay. Um, there's a lot of scheming and there's a lot of like, 
character stuff that I think is going pretty well, though. Um, I like what's going on with Frenchie, and uh, I've heard I like A-Train's what's going been on. Getting a good arc. Yeah, I, I, some people are not liking what's going on with A Train. I'm liking it. I think A Train's mm-hmm. doing a. Okay. I, I like the stuff, but I'm, I'm liking it. I also finished uh, the Bear. I finished season season three yesterday. I'm Loved only on it. Episode two. Thought it was great. Uh, there's mm-hmm. no. There's some a couple episodes that I think are phenomenal towards the end uh, oh, okay. of the season that I think are mm-hmm. some of the best of the bear overall. Like I'd probably put them in my top five bear episodes. The, this season feels like it's lacking in hype from last season. But then again, when season one came out, I watched it. Nobody was watching the bear season one. I remember like looking for it. I only, re- I recommended it to a few people and they're like, eh. and then I recommended my mom. And then my mom was the only one talking the bear with me. I was like, it's so good. Like people aren't getting mm-hmm. on it. And then all of a sudden season two came out and all I heard was I binged both seasons of the bear for the first time. This show's amazing. Blah, blah, blah. And it took oh, off okay. rightfully. So, but then in season three, I'm not hearing it as much. Uh, haven't heard a lot of the. Actually, this show's always been bad crowd. Like I've been seeing that come into play. So, uh, oh well, I don't. Yeah, I, I I do get where people might be getting the feeling too with this. It's like all right, three seasons and it's the same stress and anxiety. But I think mm-hmm. the the way they do that makes the 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 small moments hit hard. And we get a couple okay. really good small moments in this season that I really, really mm-hmm. loved that are not just Carmi screaming and yelling at the top of his lungs the whole time and mad at everybody. But uh, mm-hmm. I still think it's great. Also, we we went from a, you know, a time where in TV it was like, like you get, you'd get 24 episodes that were an hour long and like people wouldn't dare say it wasn't, it was bad until, you know, well after the season had come out and finished and now it's to the point where it's like if you didn't like one episode everybody's like this show's completely destroyed it's horrible i hate it like it's never been good i've never liked it it's it's always been bad and it's like what are you talking about like let's let the show come out let's get the full season then yeah. let's judge it and let's compare it to the other seasons where we're, we can't judge it's like judging a movie trilogy and picking the third movie but it's like i i'm only going to watch the first 25 minutes and then I'm stopping. But I, I know that I hate, you know, everything now. Yeah, it just doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. But I've also been watching House of the Dragon. I've been loving House of the Dragon season two. So, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Any, uh, you want to move to movies or you got another show or two you've been watching? No, I got more movies anyway. Ooh, I'm going to just pull up my letterbox diary. Let's just see what I've been watching these days. Sure, man. How many you got in July? Just in July. How many movies you watch? Let's see how I got one, two, three. Uh, looks like seven. I have eight. Oh, okay. You really had to one up me there. I huh? really, I, I know you snuck I, that other, that la- that eighth one. You probably watched this morning. You're like, I got to beat him yesterday, <laughs> but I'm so proud of that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, let's just go through July. What was your earliest? And we'll go down to the, the most recent. So like what, what'd you watch? Yeah. What'd you watch at the beginning of July? At the what beginning of July? Yeah. Uh, I watched bodies, bodies, bodies for the first time. Oh, yeah. Did I? I also... Oh, I I watched that in June. That's right. Oh, you, weren't okay. at, you weren't at the club meeting, so you yeah. uh, you had to watch it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I watched it for the first for... time, too. Fun little horror movie. Fun fun little flick is how I, I reviewed it. A fun little flick. Had a yeah. Good time. Um, I would think about the same way. I didn't love it, but I liked it enough. Um, I thought that it actually could be an indicator of, like, being the horror movie for, like, the Gen Z demographic, I guess, in a way, which makes me sound old because at the same time, I'm not sure if that necessarily is true, but just based on, like, the uh, commentaries throughout that movie of, like, the usage of social media and the usage of, like, uh, certain words to help, um, that are supposed to help, like, be understanding of, like, traumas or identity that are just used more as, like, weapons throughout the movie just made it feel like it was supposed to be kind of like commentaries for like that demographic itself or for like how it's just used in general throughout like internet culture, or just like uh, the world that we currently live in. So I do wonder if because of that and me saying like, it seems like it's more for like the Gen Z crowd, if that crowd is recognizing that and like embraces that as sort of like their ton in cheek way of being like, yeah, that's us at the same time. Like there are, good natured people you know around us by the end of the day there it also is like um sometimes that stuff goes a bit too far so i wonder if it'll be looked at in that light from like that demographic but 
that's just me also sounding old at the same time because <laughs> I'm not part of that demographic. I'm part of more millennial, I would say. So it just made me have those questions about like if the movie works for like younger ages. But otherwise, I think I saw what the movie was going for and just, you know, liked it just fine. Nice. Yeah, I liked it too. Fun little flick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. What else you've been watching in July? Uh, I saw the Elvis Presley movie, Viva Las Vegas. Oh yeah, you you've been on a little old old man movie run here. Yeah, basically, and that'll come more into play with some of the other movies I've seen. Uh, but I didn't like it. Yeah, oh. but I also understand that you know for those Elvis movies, it was just mostly for Elvis to try to become a movie star and just to monetize like his own stardom so a lot of the movie is like built to make him look like the like cool guy of everything and viva la vegas like really is a showcase of that like okay. it's a musical but the musicals don't feel like they're part of like the progression of the story it just feels like to have elvis like be singing them most of the time just to show off his singing mm. um and you know the romance was fine enough but it's also in just like such that 60s cheese that I, it just doesn't work for myself or probably for most anyone growing up currently so you know there it is impressive like uh the construction of the movie and like some of the uh settings and some of the camera shots and all that but you know otherwise i didn't really love it all right what else uh Keep well going. twister's coming out this weekend so i was able to watch twister for the first time really yeah and you yeah. hated it huh no no i enjoyed it fun um, fun kyle it's a yeah it's a fun little flick it is a fun little flick it's a fun the little theme. flick uh, it's a fun little flick i love the original twist yeah so i'm yeah, gonna watch I it this enjoyment week. Out it. it it felt spielbergian and like having characters that you love spending like a lot of time with even though um most people are just in it for like the premise but they later grow to love the characters and enjoy like just like whether it's the big moments or the little moments, like it's all about just what these characters are going through together. And I had a little bit of like realistic dramatic stakes to it, but at the same time had just enough camp to where it's not necessarily like full on Spielbergian and like feeling like such a big movie, but it would be like a B level Spielberg movie to me, which, um, it's yeah, a fun disaster I don't know. movie. I'm hyped for yeah. Twisters. Twisters is going to be the best movie of the summer. I can feel it. I am very surprised by how much, I, uh, this Twisters movie has grown on me. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm well, not. sure. But... Day one, baby. <laughs> he, phenomenal director, great cast, great story. Love it. What else mm -hmm. you got? I saw Fly Me to the Moon last night. Oh, that's the, is that the eighth movie? Is it the most recent entry then? Yeah, that's my most oh, recent one. Was it, Jenny uh, Tannum, was it good? Johansson. Yeah, I wasn't really looking forward to this one, but I came away really enjoying it because I thought the chemistry between uh, Tatum and Johansson were really good. Um, just kind of that rom-com thing of like one guy is like stuck in his own ways and it's hard to get him out of his like structure while uh, Johansson is more of like the free flowing type, but also like is driven by her uh, passion and by her work. So um, the chemistry and like the archetypes are there but they make it like their own and they make it uh really engaging but nice. i found like the story to be really interesting because in the trailer i just thought it was going to be about how they had to <laughs> how nasa and the government were going to be making this um staging of like the moon landing in case if something went wrong because they really just wanted to beat the russians so bad that they would have like faked it but it's that's only like really the second half of the movie to my surprise like the first half of the movie does a great job establishing that before that Johansson's character was hired by the government to be like NASA's um uh um like advert advertiser or like mm -hmm. salesman because there's just been so many failures at that time of like NASA trying to go to the moon that people were kind of wearing thin of them trying so they weren't like really in good light necessarily so they wanted like an advertiser to be like put your Armstrong on like Rice Krispie treat boxes, put like sell watches. Like that, that was kind of like the, the government wanted her to sell it, but like she came up with like those like advertising ways to get the public to be like, Oh, space is actually really cool. Like I get it now. And that's why it built so much attention to where it even was the reason why there was cameras like put onto um, 
the space shuttle so that way they could see the moon landing and uh yeah just really interesting history of that but at the end of the way at the, at the end of the day excuse me i just like the good hearted nature between um the nice. characters and especially the leads so yeah enjoyed nice. it nice nice um yeah i've watched seven in july on july 4th independence day it's a must of course must every year love it love a good disaster flick gonna go on a disaster flick uh run here for over the next couple days yeah, try to get a few I'm in sure. some i've seen and i want to see a couple i haven't seen some of the real bad ones you know the bad the worse the better for me mm, i love a okay. good disaster flick i just i just do uh and we'll get to one here in a minute uh then uh watch chicago uh for our, our movie club um yeah, we both did. i'd seen chicago before uh love it chicago's great it's a mm. phenomenal uh phenomenal movie uh i saw maxine um that's right. I really liked Maxine. A lot of people, it feels like it's been like either people are like, this is the best in the trilogy, and people are like, this is the worst. I haven't seen much middle ground. Uh, mm. I liked it a lot. I think all three movies are great. I do think this one narratively struggled the most overall. I think it, it was trying to do a little bit too much. Um, all the performances were excellent. Uh, um, most it's mostly Mia Goff, most and Kevin Bacon. Most of the other actors aren't in it very long. Like Halsey's in it, and I'm a big fan of hers. And she, she was great, not in it much. Uh, a mm. couple other people were very good, not in it much. Um, Esposito's in it, uh, in it a little bit more than some of the others I just mentioned. But he, uh, oh. he's great in a cool role. Um, yeah, saw that. Really dug it. I saw If because they put it on Paramount real quick, and uh, I have Paramount <laughs> now. So uh, <laughs> I went ahead and watched it, and I. Uh, I thought it was a, a fun little flick. I thought it was a fun little flick. It was cute. It was cute. Yeah, it was fine. I got, I saw that too um, with some family. And yeah, I just thought it was fine. Cute. I could see it working for younger fun kids. kids movie, and yeah. They grow up with a movie that's not necessarily like one of the best, but it's one of those when they're like, you remember if, <laughs> and then there's like some nostalgia twinge to it. I could see it being a movie kind of like that. And, you know, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know why people were so, huffy about this movie like being bad or whatever i thought it was just fine yeah it was fine yeah. fun little flick uh saw quiet place day one i know kyle Same. saw that too uh, i just recently yeah. saw it just a few days ago uh mm -hmm. i thought it was great i think all three quiet place movies that we've had come out have been awesome this one was a little bit more disastery it was a little bit more disaster flick but i liked some of the design right. choices to do with the setting i liked seeing that i thought lapita nyong'o was great i thought joseph quinn was awesome uh, in fact, it made me a little bit more excited for him, uh, to be Johnny storm. And I've been, haven't been excited, but I'm not like so many people are like, you know, I'm throwing a big hissy fic on the heck down, let people prove it. Uh, mm -hmm. but I thought I was like, I hey, did a great job. I mean, he got, got a little choked up in the movie. Weirdly. I'm just getting old. And the cat, <laughs> the cat is the go to the film. The cat needs to be, I honestly wished cause the cat's in the trailer. So I don't want to spoil anything, but. I was telling uh, uh, my, my, my fiance now uh, that um, we, uh, I was like, I would have watched a 20 minute Pixar short right before of just the cat <laughs> going through, going through the disaster, like just mm -hmm. kind of getting out, doing what the cat does. I was like, I would, I'd watch, tw I'd watch it. I'd watch it. I thought that I would have, I was like, well, I, th I'm they should have done that. I'm kind of surprised there wasn't a sequence like that of like just like three or four minutes of like the cat escaping somewhere that had like the creatures or whatever. And then like, cause I feel like the audience would have really liked a scene like that. Yeah. They would have been like, you can't kill. Yeah. I'm about to go John wick out here. If you take yeah, this exactly. cat out, what are you doing been, here? It would have been into it. Yeah. And then the cat like doesn't know anything. So it will like land on a piano and like a symbol as it's running. And it's just making things worse. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that didn't happen in the movie. Yeah, I I dug it though. Start it, really, I think a quiet place started my uh, my. I was watching the Twisters trailer, and I was like, "Why am I not spending this next week just watching disaster flicks? I got nothing sure. going on." Yeah. So I uh, and then I watched Armageddon, which weirdly enough, I've never seen Armageddon. It mm. is just mm. as Michael Bay cheesy whack as you would think, and I enjoyed awesome. every second of it. Is it bad? absolutely did i enjoy it absolutely i know what i'm getting into i know a disaster movie is going to be just what yeah. i want just what the doctor ordered okay i think yeah. i got 2012 is going to be on the docket i've seen that one but 
Uh, hey, if, if you guys got that. any recommendations, toss a couple like underrated disaster flicks. Don't give me Sharknado. I've seen Sharknado one and two. I don't need to watch those yeah. ones. Those get a little too bad for me. I want yeah, like exactly. the ones that take the ones that take themselves seriously but can be cheesy. Those that's where you want. That's where you want a disaster flick. Right. Um, right. And then most recently, I saw Long Legs, and I have not stopped thinking about it. It's uh, phenomenal. It's I did see a yeah. tweet. Because everybody's like, horror's back, horror's back. And I saw a tweet that said, 2024, long legs, horror's back. 2023, talk to me, horror's back. And then it just continued with other horror movies I really liked and have seen. And I was like, yeah, horror's been here. We just need to keep going to the theater and championing these movies. Uh, long legs was not what I expect. Well, I expected certain things going in that were met. That I think mm-hmm. you're probably expecting from what you and I have talked about. Um, okay. There were some things I did not expect. Uh, a lot of people have compared it to Silence of the Lambs um, or Zodiac, uh, which are also Silence of the Lambs. I haven't watched recently, but Zodiac we actually watched it's, recently. So good. It's, um, it, yeah, it's Silence of the Lambs is amazing. The That's biggest thing with movie. Long Legs, if you go in and you're like, and you see Nick Cage, because he does do, I think he's fantastic. But if you go in and your response is, oh, he's just being Nick Cage. He's just being weird. He's just being goofy. You're you're gonna probably not end up liking the movie because he's got to bring yeah. a little. He brings a little bit of that cageism, but I think he's wonderful. I think he mm-hmm. is borderline getting like he could end up. And you know, ask me in five years as an iconic horror villain. I, again, ask me in five years. Give me time to marinate on it. Mm-hmm. But I think he was great. It's a slow burn. But I will I will say this about the movie. Okay, I don't get really scared. Jump scares like that don't get me anymore, which is wild because I was scared of like the wind as a child. Like yeah. I farted and got scared. You know what I mean? Like I, <laughs> I, I was terrified of everything. I remember seeing AI artificial intelligence. My dad was watching it in the scene where his mm. face smelts. I remember it scared me for years after that. Yeah. I didn't even watch the movie. I just walked by and I saw that scene. I was terrified. And then you farted and got more scared. Uh, it's true. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I, so as I've come to become a, a huge fan of horror, every Halloween my goal is to just binge as many new horror movies as I can. I've mm-hmm. been through most of the classics now, trying to get into some of the the the, the fun time horror movies I've I've heard so many so much about. But I went in with this, and if you're going in expecting it to be the type of scary where you're going to be, ah, 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 and you're going to be jumping and there's jump scares and all that. It's not that type of scary. When people are going in and they're saying that this is the scariest movie ever, it's really just unnerving. So here's all I'll finish up with uh, on long legs. When I go to the theater, I always get me a large corn, big, big popcorn guy. Okay. Big popcorn guy. I always go get me a large corn. Uh, I went very early in the morning and it partially because, you know, seeing a horror movie in the daylight helps keep, keep me sane, but also I have nothing going on in my days. And I was like, why, why go late at night when the lady gets home and I could be hanging out and doing stuff with her? Why go do that when I could do it in the, af- in the afternoon and it's yeah. cheaper. So I went at an early showing, decided to grab myself a pizza, got myself popcorn, had a lot of food, but usually I can, I was pretty hungry. Hadn't eaten yet that morning. I was down in it pretty good. And about 20 minutes in, I was like, I'm just going to stop. I put the popcorn to the side. Quite a few people in my showing too for very early. I when I bought the ticket, there was only one other ticket sold. And mm-hmm. then there was probably 20, 25 people in the theater by the end of it. Uh okay. but I put my my popcorn to the side and I was like, all right, maybe maybe I'm feeling full. Ten minutes goes by and I realize I can tell that my heart rate is just slightly elevated. I can tell that I'm not tired, I'm not like getting sweaty, I'm not like but I can just tell that I was slightly nervous and Mm. my heartbeat was beating a little fast. And I realized I wasn't full necessarily from popcorn or the pizza or whatever. I was just, I was, I had a little bit, a little, a little hint of a pit in my stomach. And Mm. I was like, I'm just nervous. (laughs) I realized it maybe 25 minutes into the movie. I was like, I'm just nervous. Mm. I'm just nervous. And so I didn't really munch anymore, brought the popcorn home, brought the leftovers home with me and ate them later in the day. But I was like, I was, uh, and hey, when you got me to put the corn down, I think you've done a good job That's in, your, a rarity, in the man. spooks, in the spooks you're trying to deliver. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and the way you it's get shot, the popcorn done under twenty five minutes. <laughs> it's it's true. I didn't have I didn't have that much left. To be fair, I had a little little under still, half. I had really pound back quite a bit. Still, I know uh, how you. I know your eating habits in movie theaters. That's a rarity. And Kyle's seen me down regal larges, and let me tell you, they're not good. It's no. not even close how bad not. their popcorn is compared to every other popcorn out there. Man, if um, Regal doesn't drop a dime at my Regal <laughs> location, I'm going to do unspeakable things. You should. I'll come, I'll fly back yeah. and join you. Uh, but I, uh, and I will, I'll add this one more little tidbit too. If, just by terms of the cinematography, if I didn't know that David Fincher didn't make it, I would have guessed David Fincher had made it. Because it, it felt mm. Finchery. The way it was okay. lit, the shots felt very David Fincher, and I really, really liked that. Um, yeah, no, I thought I thought Long Legs was excellent. Um, we've got five minutes. I thought of a new idea. I want to throw this at you, uh, Kyle. Go to your go to your, get your get your letterboxed open, mm-hmm. and I want you to pick two of the four movies on your watch list at the top of the four at the top. Give me two that you think. I need. I should add to my watch list right now, um, if it's not already happened to be on there. And I'll give you two of my four. Call it watch list. Watch list segment. I don't know. Oh, okay. I see. Um, two on my watch list. I have. I saw the TV glow and monster. That are at the very top. That's at the very top of your watch yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. I have I saw the TV glow towards the bottom, or not towards the bottom, in the middle, mm-hmm. and I have monster. I assume we're both meaning the same one. Yeah, that's the one. I have th- I've had that on my watch list for a while. Insane, insane. I no let's idea. see, let's see if you have mine. Uh, I added the movie uh, Kill. This foreign film that everybody's talking about is John Wick on a train. Mm-hmm. I I I would recommend you add because I'm getting hyped to see it. I've heard it's great. I want to watch right. it. I added that recently, and then I added Dog Day Afternoon recently by Sidney Lumet because right. uh, 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 my brother and his lady had watched it. I know our buddy Travis, a bunch of people had watched it, have rated it, and I uh, have never seen it, but I've always heard about it, so I added that if you wanted to add that. little little watch list tidbit for you. Thank um, you. So, yeah. All right, Kyle, any final thoughts as we wrap up here? Um, everyone just watch movies. Um, in the there's plenty, there's many others that we weren't able to like say in terms of what we've watched lately. So go just yeah. like to our letterbox pages and yeah. follow us and see what we're watching. That'd be cool. But, uh, lately for me this year, I've just been trying to branch out in terms of like even the older stuff of just like yeah. different genres and things. And it's been a lot of fun and it's been really, uh, uh, helpful for like wanting to know more about like film history and, uh, the craft of it and stuff like that. So Absolutely. just just don't be afraid to just go out there and just try to find stuff outside your bubble because otherwise you're just yelling about, you know, Star Wars having a black lead character yeah. all the time. Which and is it's awesome. just sad. She's great. Excellent in the accolade. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Go to the theater. Hey, last time we filmed the podcast, theaters were dead. They were dying. The entire industry oh, yeah. is melting. Guess what? Now everybody's like, oh, the theaters are doing very, very well. And now, yeah, what did Kyle and I say on here? What did we say on this Literally show? our last episode. Yeah. We talked and about- a month later. How we much? were literally like, talk to us in a month and we'll see how it's feeling. And then Inside Out 2 makes a billion dollars. Is excellent. It's an awesome movie. Yeah. Like- Come on, guys. How many times are we going to do this This Stop game? Stop tracking box office stuff. Just yeah. enjoy movies. I will tell you, Kyle and I will not be back next week. We will not be back the week after. I'm going, to visit. <laughs> I'm going to visit him, baby. I'm headed home yeah. for a 10-day vacay. Uh, all my other trips were slight vacations, slight not this summer, which has kind of kept us busy. But summer, we, we tend to do this in the summer. But maybe Kyle and I will sneak off and make a quick little, quick little something when we're together because I'll see him for for a day yeah. or so. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, good to, good, Hey, movie mills. We never, we never leave. Okay. We just, we just, we just, uh, go do our, <laughs> do our things. You know what I mean? But that being said, we're leaving, but we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back. I think we give a we always up. come back. Uh, thank you. <laughs> meal patrons. Go get some merch, uh, share us, like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for watching mom. 
See you guys.